Karen Wright. Welcome to the show, Brain Health Unchaining Your Pain. It's an absolute pleasure to have you on my show today. Welcome. Thank you so much. I'm just so excited to be here with you, Dr. Ruth. <laughs> so for those that don't know, Karen is an in, is a number one international best-selling author, speaker, radio show host, savvy businesswoman, and she has an amazing book, um, Now or Never, Shine, Baby Shine, which was just really pulled my heartstrings. It was just amazing. Mm -hmm. Um, and that book really takes her readers on a, a just a phenomenal journey um, where she's she is an expert in all forms of loss. And that was a healing journey for yourself and talks about your freedom, passion and empowerment that you felt was stripped from you. And I'd really love to talk to you about that a little bit more. And I know your Voice America radio show, Now or Never, The Choice is Yours is amazing and it invites the listeners to lean into an authentic and raw stories and messages that your guests share on air um, and you you say you'll feel that the airwaves um, shed that light and energy from yourself and your guests so I'd love for you to share that passion and that light and that gift that you have on this show so thank you uh and it's just such a pleasure so for, for those that don't know you too well can you just tell everyone who you are i know i've given an introduction what you do and and who you really serve so when people say who is karen i'm just <laughs> i'm just a human being i'm just someone who loves life and i'm i'm here to help others find their authentic self um, I'm a mom. I've got three beautiful children, one grandson, my daughter who passed, who we'll talk about. She's my angelic daughter, my little angel who follows me around all over. I've got two dogs. Um, so I'll mute if they start barking. They've been really quiet. So, but <laughs> I might have to be like, well, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I just, you know what? I am just, just a regular person. <laughs> Life. You know, I've just been exposed to so much in the last, um, my journey just keeps evolving and I'm introduced to so many beautiful people like you, Dr. Ruth, and other people on my show. You know, the, the whole, the last, this last year has been a whirlwind with everything that's happened to me and the opportunities that have been placed in front of me and learning to open the door and allowing them to come through, allowing myself to walk through. So I don't know, it's kind of like me and Nutshell. Do you want to know more? Like, what's my favorite food? What color do I like? <laughs> just, I, I mean, yeah, just tell us. Uh, we just lost you just a second, then the, the network cut out. So if you could just tell us just the last bit about your your whirlwind journey this year. Oh, yeah. So my book, um, Now or Never, Shine, Baby, Shine, that you talked about, it's a memoir. It's about my life story. And so I launched that on my birthday, March 19th this year. <gasps> and it was so exciting. And I had all these interviews about it. And I fell in love with sharing my story. Yeah. Um, and so my next step was, well, I want to do a radio show. So I was introduced to producers from Voice America. I... um you know, talk to them about my idea about my show, Now or Never, The Choice is Yours, what it was all about. And when? May? April? I first, I started my show in April, just like you're wow. so, like, it's like, <laughs> and then all these people are introduced to me and coming out of the woodwork. And I'm like, oh my goodness, how exciting it is. And it's just the power and the beauty of what is out in this world right now is amazing and isn't it weird how it all kind of seems to sort of just happen you just yes. have to kind of, it just flows doesn't it it's amazing mm -hmm. it's amazing so so this show is all about brain health and unchaining your pain so i would love to know what optimal brain health means for you personally so I might have a different take on this than That's maybe cool. a lot of people. But to me, optimal brain health is 
is when you can create your life and by programming yourself in I believe in manifesting I believe what you put out to the universe comes back and as long as you're not questioning what you're manifesting but once you manifest I want something to happen it's out in the universe and all of a sudden doors start opening like I'm saying doors start opening people start entering your life and things start falling into place just easy like you've yeah. never, just easy and to yeah. me that's optimal brain health yeah when you allow those doors to it. open and you you have that ability to have the doors open to the wider world and that like you say manifest yeah. uh, what you want to give to the world that's 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 a totally different take but i really love it because i totally agree that you know that unchaining is really kind of opening those doors of possibility and opportunity. Mm -hmm. So with, with that in mind, could you take us on the like the really the first part of your journey, if you will, where those doors were firmly shut for you? Yeah, so in 2004, it was um, September 1st, and my oldest daughter, she was 18, she was running her first cross country race at the high school. So it was the first season race. And she went into, um, she had seizures growing up. So she had yeah. a little bit of health issues, but they were things that we kept under control with meds and things like that. Um, but during the race, she went into a seizure and then it led to a cardiac arrest and she died right there on the field. Oh my goodness. And so my, my, the door was slammed shut <laughs> for yeah. not only the mom, but my ex, my husband at the time, who was there supporting her because I was off with another child supporting her. And then my youngest child was with him and he, she was six. And so she experienced and saw all of this happening. And not only was it such this tragic for our us as a family but also for the school it was a school event so the city got involved the school got yeah. involved the cross country members the parents everyone that we'd grown up with since junior high into mm -hmm. you know this world of running and it was um it was one of those horrific experiences you never wish upon any parent ever mm. ever and i i know in your book you talked about that kind of just total overwhelm because of the fact it reached kind of national news status mm -hmm. and uh, how did you manage I mean I just can't it, it was hard enough when I lost my dad and we didn't we didn't have all the press and the publicity but how, how did you how did you get through those first few days hours how did you manage to to find the strength to go forward um, that question's amazes me still to this day because I look back and I think, how did I do it? And yeah. that's when I believe my truth is that there's a higher being, there's a God, a universe around us. And I believe in angels. And I, I trust that my daughter who passed away was with me every step of the way, just like <sighs> pushing me through it. And it was kind of like a tag team between my husband and I, like, he would step up to the plate and let me just like cry. And then I would step up to the plate and let him go do what he needed to do. But the first 48 hours, I was kind of the spokesperson. I was the one that was in, making the phone calls in front of the TV, in front of the newspaper interviewers and telling the story. And I learned really quick about, <laughs> which is not healthy, bearing your emotions and putting on your mask. Mm. Yeah, you call it your business hat. You know, you have different hats that you put on throughout the day, whether you're mom or working, things like that. And I learned just to put on this hat and just to be able to drive myself through it mm. without having those emotions, those tears. Mm. Um, and so, and I just think a lot of it was the support from the other side that helped wow. me. Wow. Mm. Yeah. I kind of re can really relate to that because I know when my dad passed away, my mum was in a massive state of shock. 
and mm -hmm. I kind of had to park my emotions and bury them because what was more important was to really look after my mum and I knew that I had to pop the grief until later. Is that, did you find that you had to do that for yourself too? Yeah. Well, and I think I call that survival mode in a sense yeah. that you have to put everything away and just step by step, one thing after another. And when it's like when you're taking care of your mom, you know, you're there to support her, to help her make the decisions. You put on that business hat and she's trusting you she's leaning on you so you have to be the pillar yeah you know during that time until you know she's okay then you're able to step back and just and that's when i crumbled yeah yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah just, just a big blubbering mess <laughs> yeah Which, that's beautiful i'm glad you were <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So I know you wanted, uh, you know, for the experience with your daughter and the seizures that she was struggling with, that you wanted to share the message of the um, the struggles that she had um, for parents to be aware of what can change and what to recognise and how to not, them not to experience the, or go through the experience that you went through with your daughter. Mm -hmm. what 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 advice would you give to parents i know she had a, a surgical procedure didn't she she did she had um, yeah the vega nervous system was placed in her and it was a newer um experimental thing that was going on it was probably five years new at the time mm -hmm. when she got it and it was almost like it just a magnet that was put placed under the skin by her heart and then wires were attached to the vagan nerve into her brain and she wore a magnet on her wrist and so when she would swipe it in front it would send an electrical current into the vagan nerve in the skull and cause you know the currency to go haywire right mm -hmm. to hopefully diminish the activity of the seizure or make it smaller things like that and so um, because medicines weren't controlling the seizures, mm. this was our next step that we tried. Yeah. And she had the implant done her um, going into the summer, going to her senior year. So this is actually, she had gotten the doctor's release the week before her first race going, she's strong. The currency, because you have to microdose it, right? Just like mm -hmm. any meds a little bit at a time. So the currency was adjusted over a period of the three month span until it was at the highest level that she could handle, right? Mm. And um, so she had the clear to go. And so we're thinking this is gonna be amazing. Yeah, this is great. Yeah. And when that happened, it was I was um I was shocked when I when she passed and we were at the hospital where they pronounced her dead when we got to the hospital and the emergency doctor at that time made a comment to me and he said did you realize that this vegan nerve system can slow down the heart rate put in in a person so when someone is racing the heart is beating twice as fast but yeah. with the device in is causing it to even beat harder which was his explanation of how it led into the cardiac arrest mm. And um, I was talking about another door slamming in your face because here I am, Dr. Ruth, thinking we just killed our daughter. Mm. We just put this trusting in what the doctors have said that it would help her, but not realizing that all of the side effect was part of it because they knew she was around. They knew from day mm. one why we were doing this. And so I was very devastated with that knowledge when I received it. And I remember the wrath of a mom coming forth where I wanted yeah. to sue the doctors, just, just the vengeance, you know? Yeah. And that's where my husband stepped up to the plate and he's like, yeah. he's not going to bring her back. Yeah. You know, and I, he calmed me down, but I was just, you know, I look back and I, I know now it was her time. It, this was her yeah. journey, her story. She died doing what she loved. Yeah. She quick. I mean, Dr. Ruth, what's the big, I mean, we all want to die doing something that we love and there's no pain. It's just quick. 
Absolutely. That's uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, my dad. My dad was fortunate. He went very quickly. I mean, it wasn't. It wasn't a nice experience for for my mum or myself. But you know, like you say, d- dying doing what you love and having a great day is mm-hmm. what we all want to do, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Oh gosh. Thank you so much for sharing that story because I think it's so important that parents are made aware, which you you clearly weren't made aware that the 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 consequences of of this device that was as you say it was new and and you told the doctors what the situation was with your daughter so it certainly hopefully mm-hmm. you you realize that's not your fault um, right yeah yeah so so such a i mean so i've got a daughter of my set myself and i just can't imagine how hard it must be um to lose a daughter and obviously you went through a really difficult period in your life after that. Would you be able to share with people um, how your how your story evolved um, yeah. after your daughter passed? Yeah, I would love to share. Um, during that time, I had three little ones. There was a six-year span between my 18-year-old and then my next daughter, who was, what, 12 at the time, and then 12, 10, and six or whatever. It's like boom, boom, boom. Um, and so you kind of go into survival mode, like we talked about earlier. And I just learned to, you know, I went into deep, I went into depression. Yeah. I slept a lot. I'd get my kids off to school. I'd come home, set my alarm for two (laughs) o'clock, get up, shower, go pick them up from school, take them to their soccer piano, just the routine, feed them dinner, do their homework, put them to bed. I went to bed. I was just like zombie. And um, finally, probably about four months to six months after the fact, I got on an antidepressant. Uh And once we stabilized that, that started bringing me out of that darkness, which really helped me during that time. And I stayed on that um, antidepressant for about five years. Wow. Because I had no emotion. I didn't want to do anything. I was just like. Did you just feel like you had to block it and that was your only way to get through? Because that must have been so hard with with three kids. Yeah. I mean, and what were they experiencing? Yeah. Would, you know, here they just lost their sister, but yet they're supposed to be a normal life. Well, what's a normal life now? Because our life's not normal. We just mm. had a horrific experience. And it it's so, it's hard to put words what they were thinking because mm. they all handled it totally different. Mm. Each of them. Mm. And so I felt at that time I was there to support them and to try to help them the best I could and the best I knew how. And we went to counseling, you know, but you go to a counselor once and the kids are like, we're fine. And then they're like, okay, moving on. <laughs> yeah. And in reality, they don't really know they're fine. No. And I think that's a big issue, isn't it? For the way we approach helping kids is is it's difficult to tap into their emotions because they're still evolving as children mm-hmm. and and to get them to express their emotions verbally is very hard as well because they don't necessarily have the language that we have as adults right. to express their emotions so they express them in different ways how did how did how did you manage to navigate through that really difficult time with, with your children? Um, each day was a new day. <laughs> they each they each took their turns. Like the little one who saw her daughter who saw her sister pass, she had she was scared of separation anxiety. Oh. So she'd go to school and two hours later she called me. I got a tummy ache. I need to come home. So I go and pick her up. And that happened for like three, four years. She went to sleepovers anymore. She didn't want to leave the house because she didn't know what would happen if she did. Would she return back home to mom and dad? Would her other siblings be gone? And so, and it's, it's interesting watching this as she's grown. Now she's 23 and has a, a child of her own, but things, she holds on to material things like shopping, spending mm-hmm. money something she can grasp onto mm-hmm. is something she's she's learned to do and i think it's part of the part of that loss she mm-hmm. holds on to things 
She doesn't want to be without. Doesn't want and, to let go. Mm -hmm. And so as time is progressing and I look back and just kind of analyze a little bit, not being a doctor or anything, but just seeing things. That's what I've seen with her. Um, my son in the household, you weren't allowed to cry. Um, due to wow. the father figure in the household. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if you showed emotion, dry it up, don't cry, don't be a sissy, all this stuff. And so when the dad, when dad was gone, because he traveled, emotions were raging with tears. And my son, who was this passive little boy at eight, became very angry and started mm -hmm. hitting or lashing out at his sisters for no reason, but just this anger inside of him. And so I learned really quick to give him the pillow and show him how to beat up the pillow, hit mm -hmm. the pillow, get your anger out, scream and shout all you want. It's okay. It's safe. Yeah. And, and I think, I think that's a really important point actually, because um, I see emotions are like a wave. It's a signal that we, we need to do something and those waves build, don't they? And they build and they build. And if we don't pay attention to them, before long the wave can get too great and it kind of crashes on you and you, like you say you you get this rage or this anger and you and you have to expel it or you just you just can't you have to do something with it don't you mm -hmm. and it, it's um it's gi giving children that really important outlet I mean for me it was I used to do taekwondo as a kid through the yeah. <laughs> the, the anger I had but giving children a controllable outlet, you know, like you say, with a pillow to let them have that emotional release mm -hmm. um, without doing harm to themselves or others is just so, so important, isn't it? It really is. And using, being able to use your voice, right? Um, to express how you're feeling. Yeah. Because we're taught in society not to have emotions. Yeah. You know, back up, don't show emotions where, yeah we're starting to as a society open up and saying emotions are wonderful we have five senses those five senses bring out emotions when we smell we think right. of cookies when we touch we're like oh what is you know emotions are great and they go along with the senses but we've been taught not to have emotion and i think that's just terrible it's just a yeah. terrible thing so yeah. I believe the more emotions that you have and you can express how you're feeling, you use your words. And if you want to cry, you want to laugh, whatever it is, it's okay. It's great. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And I think that's so key, isn't it? Like you, obviously from the dynamic in your family is um, your, your son being told not to cry and to button it up actually amplifies the emotion and it just builds and builds like trauma because it mm -hmm. was triggered through trauma right, in the first instance. Yeah. And then, like you say, it just the, the pot overflows and it's really hard to control. So so how you mentioned your son and your and your youngest daughter who who experienced the, the event. How, how did it transpire in, in your in your other other? Um, yeah, my 12 child. year old daughter. So she, yeah. it was interesting because she was now the oldest of the family yeah and stepping into that role and i remember her saying i don't want to be the oldest yeah that must have been so hard yeah. for her and so you have these responsibilities and you have you know you almost step into like um not a mom role but she she has a lot of um oh how do i want to say it she questioned a lot if there was a god she had a lot of anger if there was really a God and why God would take her sister away. Mm -hmm. um, relationships. She has issues. Hopefully she never listens to this. But this is just my perspective, right? Yeah. <laughs> but like with relationships, sir, that issue, there's, there's trust. There's, you know, um, how do I know? And this can be that separation anxiety too, again, like my youngest had, and I think all my kids have had it, but hers is, it has more developed around relationships. Yeah. Um, and it's been interesting watching that happen because then she had not a great relationship with her dad because all of a sudden now being the oldest, more responsibilities put on top of the oldest and you have to, you know, have so many credits before you start college. 
through high school, you have to get up every morning at 530 and you're going to practice violin from 530, 630. And then you're going to do this. And like this, we had our kids scheduled like this mm. every single morning. And then after school and, you know, I look back and I'm like, oh, my gosh, I was kind of like a Nazi mom. Like, this is our schedule. This is what we do. This is when we eat. This is when we sleep. This is what. And I'm looking like if I were to raise my kids now, how oh, totally different. You it's know? kind of almost not giving them permission to breathe. Yeah. <laughs> and just be, you know, my whole yeah. message now is just to be and enjoy life. And I I think there's parts, just like everybody's life, there's parts we enjoy, but then there's just parts we did because we were expected to do something, whether it's satisfying your parents yeah. or because you're in school or because you're on soccer team or teams and you have to perform to a certain level you know, I think, how do we survive, Dr. Ruth? How did we yeah. get this far? How did I get to my 50s and be like, oh, my God. <laughs> You're like, it is survival because you don't get a handbook, do you, when you become a mum? No. You just have to learn by doing. And even the handbooks, it does, it's not a handbook for your child. It's just a generic handbook. It's totally different. I was, listening different. To, I was listening to this book, and they said, you know, young people, our bodies are made to have children. I mean, that's what our hormones do. We get, you know, we want to be in relation, we want to give up, have babies. But babies, young people, should not be raising babies. Babies should not be raising babies. The baby should be given to the elders of the tribe and allow the elders who have experienced the 50 plus years of life raise these babies and still allowing the parents who, you know, have the babies be part of it, but la allowing the tribal, the elders to raise the children. I'm like going, oh my gosh, that would solve, solve a lot of things in this life. <laughs> if, if that's how we practiced it, you know? Yeah, I, I think definitely having that support network is really important, isn't it? Especially when you're a, a, a young mom. What, what advice would you give to parents who've just lost just lost a son or daughter what would advice based on your experience that you had at the time what advice would you give especially if they have children who you know other children as well i would um advise them to allow emotion mm -hmm. allow tears a lot of a lot of talking how are you feeling you mad being able as to as a parent showing your tears showing mm. your frustration not at your child but at the fact of the situation that's happened and not try to hide it you don't have mm. to be this you know warrior you can have feelings and your kids can have it and then finding you know people they trust that they can talk to support groups to me are really important and finding you know a counselor energy people i'm all about the energy work like mm -hmm. the chakras and things like that mm -hmm. but introducing your children to that and getting in you know, letting them express their drawing or pottery or just going out and having a day where you take, you know, you go to the dollar store and buy all this glass, you know, glasses and, and plates and put them in a big bag and wear your goggles with bat and just bang it, just hit it out, <laughs> hit out the frustration and allow it to happen, you know. <laughs> and it's in a good environment. Like if I would have done that with my children, oh my goodness. Pretty soon that anger turns into laughter, turns into ah, relief. Yeah. And it feels so much better. Yeah, I think that's just a fantastic piece of advice because, like you say, there is so much anger. And that's quite often a common child's response, isn't it, to, to dealing with a major trauma, whether it's a, a loss of a, a sibling or, or something else that's happened to them that kids often get angry and having that. I love the the plate smashing idea or, or getting ones with sweets and not something that you can, what are they called? Pon Pinatas. Pinatas. Yeah. So, <laughs> to, to let their anger out. Brilliant, brilliant. Yeah. And um, so tell me what happened. Uh, I know you went through a really difficult period through your relationship after that. And obviously your husband was grieving and his grief was going in a very different way to your grief. Mm -hmm. So tell me what happened. Uh, uh, how does your story continue? Yeah, so um, I was married very young at 19 and had my first child right away three months later. So seven yeah. months pregnant going into this relationship. 
and I married my knight in shining armor. You know, this is my, I'm a magical, believe in happily ever after fairy tale type thing. And so throughout the relationship, I, um, whatever, I did whatever he wanted. I always wanted to please. I'm a pleaser. I please people. I do things. And it was interesting after the loss of Kalina, um, my oldest, we never communication first off before we even lost her was never there. Mm -hmm. I was talked at, I was talked to, but it didn't matter what I thought everything ended up what he wanted. Mm -hmm. He always had the last say and I didn't, you know, they have names for that now and, you know, controlling personality or this or that. Um, but it's his character. Mm -hmm. And it is who he is. And after the loss, the communication got worse. And um, I felt myself just dying inside. Mm. And we went to counseling. We tried different things. But at the end of the day, you know, I I was unfaithful in my relationship on him. Mm -hmm. I looked out, outside the marriage for that connection with someone. I wanted that mm -hmm. emotional connection that I wasn't getting in my house in my bedroom. Mm. And yeah, I, I did that. And I mm. take full responsibility of what I did. I shattered him, mm. you know, and vice versa. Mm. So our marriage had its ups and downs and how yeah. we stayed married for 28 years is amazing to me. <laughs> <laughs> I think your journey at the beginning in your book was a, just a phenomenal, um, the, how you were so strong in that in those early early days of your relationship and bring Kalina into the world and yeah. those difficult times that you had together but I think you're right as you know that connection piece can easily people don't they talk talk about communication don't they but you you can communicate with somebody but not actually physically connect with them Mm. at an emotional level or a physical level or a spiritual level mm -hmm. or even a, a mental level and sort of cognitive interest and stimulation and I think if you don't have that it's very difficult to 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 light that sparking side inside yourself mm -hmm. so how, how how did you work I know you went on a journey of self-discovery how did you work your way <laughs> How did you work your way through this quagmire? Yeah, so in 2014, I filed for divorce. And uh -huh. um, that it, it was something that we had talked about, but I don't think he ever thought I would do. Uh -huh. And so I blew his pants out of the water. And he was very well known in, in the city we live in. Well, businessman, made, you know, <sighs> businessman, entrepreneur, just did really well. And I walked away from it. Mm. And um, I thought, now what? Because <laughs> I'm like going, okay, I only have alimony for a certain amount of time and I have to make a living. And so I started doing real estate, so selling homes. And of course, anything in sales, it takes time to build. Mm. And um, so trying to build my business, I started listening to self-help tapes. I was like audible queen. I would put my he headbuds in and I've always loved Dr. Ruth, the nature of the mountains. I live in the mountains. So I would go outside every day, put in my ear pugs and just start listening to Wayne Dyer or Sam McGill or something, you know, yeah. tell me about life and how to like empower myself again. And kid you not, I probably listened prior to my divorce. I started listening probably five years before wow. I got the courage to step out of the divorce. I finally was, felt like, okay, I had a purpose. I finally was able to build my self-esteem because I had allowed it to be destroyed and not knowing what I was doing until I started listening to all of this. And then through, after the divorce, through, you know, continue to listen. I still listen to tapes like that all the time, motivational speakers, things like mm -hmm. that. I love that kind of stuff. It's engaging. You always learn something new. And then nature was so important to me, being outside and talking to God. I talk out loud to God all the time. And then I, I learned about a new thing called meditation. I was like, what's meditation? Mm. You know, and here I had the squirrel, you know, you can see that you know, it's like boom, boom. the energy inside of my brain is just going all the time and learning to focus in on one thing. And I started that right after my divorce. And that was probably wow. one of the biggest challenges um, after my divorce that I had 
was learning how to meditate because it's a wow. it's a muscle. You're training. It is. It's something you need to do daily. Yeah. It's not and, like a one and done, is it? No. <laughs> and, you, and you don't become a meditation master. You don't. You know, you just have to do it. It's like yeah. a learning to breathe properly. It's so true. You and the interesting going. thing is, Dr. Ruth, you don't. I meditate daily, but I didn't see the effect until I stopped for like three or four days. And now all of a sudden I'm like, what is going on? I don't, I don't feel grounded. Like I'm just airborne, like I'm out here, you know? And I realized I haven't meditated for four days. Wow. And so that was kind of my acknowledgement of how important meditation is for me, but along with, I think everybody. And yeah. There's different forms of meditation. That's what people cracks me up because they're like, oh, I can't sit still for five minutes. And so I always put this. So I'm always like, what's your favorite sport? What's something you just love to do, whether it's dancing or playing the piano? Let's say it's playing the piano. I'm like, you're in the middle of the song. You're playing the piano. And all of a sudden, everything that you're hearing out here, the noise, the background music is gone. And you're focused in on this piano playing and this beautiful song. I go, that's a form of meditation. Yeah, it's just it, even like doing a puzzle. Exactly. Because you're totally focused on that particular mm -hmm. activity. Yeah. I, I I personally, for me, I love to, if I feel like everything's getting out of control, um, I just love to just lie down and uh, like almost earth myself. Uh -huh. So I'll lie down on the ground, especially if it's outside, it's even better, or on the sofa if it's raining and pouring with rain and, and, and just just lie and just be at peace with myself and just let the energy just sort of drop out of my body and into the ground, all that negativity just go vroom. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and when you imagine that kind of happening and just let, you feel really heavy because yeah. you, because you're just letting it go, aren't you? And then, and it's that some people may think this sounds completely weird, but you just got to give it a go yeah, try it. and try and find the right one for you. And you can do it in a minute, 20 minutes. And like you say, there's so many different types of meditation, such a, a powerful uh, tool for brain health. So how, how did that really affect, how did that really impact you? What did that enable you to do when you got into that practice of meditation? Um, I, I learned to be, and I learned to be in the moment, which is what this now process is all about in yeah. my, my life. Um, I, I did a quick trip to Bali, which was out of the ab abnorm for me. I went for a month and became yoga certified. I love and that I, story. Yeah. And that <laughs> increased story. with the meditation, like it just went hand in hand and that was another, but you don't have to go to Bali, you, you know, to have the experience. Yeah. Um, but that's what I chose to do and doing that. It was, it was just amazing. You're gonna have to and you've never that. done yoga before. <laughs> you just... <laughs> you just thought I'll just go and I'm like oh I'm going I'm gonna go do yoga I'm gonna be yoga certified and I have now a little studio in my basement I teach once a week but it's not like it's you know it's I enjoy it but I don't do it on my own unless I have someone to do it with yeah yeah so I'm not like the yogi who has to do it every day I'm more of the meditator where the hiker the meditation you know the water skier that's my zone and when I'm in the zone water skiing I'm just like cutting hard and there's nothing you just feel you're one you know when you're oh one, yeah the, and the rope and just like ah. when you're in the flow in the flow yeah so i say i love that um so yeah the bali trip was crazy i'm so glad i did it i met beautiful people there that i'm still connected to and that was kind of like my my opening up of um I was raised in the, you know, we're not talking religion, but in a Christian environment. And all of a sudden, I, it opened up my box. And I realized there's more out there than what I've been taught. Oh. And um, my truths started to change. And being raised, I know we weren't going to talk about religion, but I am. Being raised in a certain religion, you're taught certain things to where you you just know it's in your body. It's in your cell. Yeah. And all of a sudden, different truths are coming up, and you're hearing things. And you're like, "That sounds, that makes sense to me." And all of a sudden, you're experiencing guilt because it's not how you were raised. And mm. so, all of a sudden, this new guilt or fear that God's not going to love you if you don't go to this church sets in because that's how what how you've been taught since you were a little kid. Mm -hmm. And so, the spirituality and the religion are two separate things for me. 
and I became very spiritual. I realized that the sun shines down on every single person on this world the same. God does not choose one over the other. God loves us all the same. He's got that mm -hmm. capacity. And God is an energy, a form of energy, not a man. It's just energy. And we all mm -hmm. have part of him in me. And that's my spirituality. That's what my mm -hmm. truth is. And so that started opening up my eyes a lot, too, um, with the meditation. And I went to Sedona after Bali in Arizona and experienced a vortex. Wow. And that whole experience, I was by myself when it happened, and that whole experience happened, and I thought, okay, you know what? This world is beautiful, and I have a calling, and my, I need to spread the light and love to everybody, and we're all unique and authentic and raw and beautiful. And instead of looking at my past as this, although it was horrific and everything, Never wish my past on anyone else, but I embrace my past because because of my past, I am today who I am. Mm -hmm. And so I give kudos and love and forgiveness to everyone that I've hurt and people that have hurt me. And I realized they were on my journey to make me the strong person I am today. I, I do you know I re that really resonates with me because when you go through really d difficult transitions in your in your journey which I did myself um, when I was in the corporate world mm -hmm. the you don't appreciate at the time that if you can turn that pain into purpose and the, and you can take it and leverage it to give you that strength how much strength it can actually give you and certainly from losing my dad mm -hmm. you know I never realized how much that loss would actually give me that voice to to appreciate and understand other people and and to be able to uh i think really understand the message that he left and i learned so much from my dad after he passed um mm -hmm. I, I never expected he he teaches me every day and i i like you uh, butterflies are my thing for my for my dad and, mm -hmm. and toadstools because he's written his Pix Peter Pixie book. Um, uh, because your, yours is um, dragonflies, Dragon yeah, 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 and um, for Kalina. And I just think it's so beautiful when you, when you have that ability to turn that pain into something that you can harness for, for the good of you going forward in life. What would you what would you say to somebody who's who's really struggling to 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 make that transition from the pain that they've suffered from a loss of someone into into turning it into into purpose and passion and and being able to be the person that they they want to be? What would you say to someone? I would tell them to take one step at a time. Okay. Not not be discouraged. I mean, there were days I didn't want to get out of bed. Yeah. But you take the first step getting out of bed. And then the second step for me is always making my bed. So yeah. I now just accomplished two things. Yeah. And hello world, I feel good about myself. I did yeah, two celebrate. Things. <laughs> Yeah, right? I, I do remember that when I was really depressed, getting out of bed, I was like, I got out of bed. Yeah, yeah. I stood up. <laughs> yeah, and and here's my thing is you cannot, and this right now is, I've noticed a lot of this, well, comparison. We, we're always quick to compare ourselves to someone else. Whether yeah. it's social media, you get on Facebook, Instagram. I mean, I'm like, I hate getting on because I'm like, ah, those guys are doing amazing things and I didn't do anything today. You know, you feel... You're, you're not feeling good about yourself. And and I think, oh, my gosh, Karen, look where, where you've been and where you're, where you're going. And and life is amazing. And so it's, don't compare yourself to anyone else because this is your journey, your story. And don't you think you can do something better than someone else either. Or don't judge someone else going, oh, my gosh, why did they do that? I wouldn't have done yeah. that. You don't yeah. know because you're not that person and you're not in those shoes, you're not on their path. And so to me, it's like, don't compare, don't judge. 
and just do baby steps and be so happy with the little things that you do. Yeah, celebrate the little things. Yeah. Because the big things will come. Oh, they'll come. Yeah. They will. And it's all in timing. Maybe not so much what we think our timing should be. Um, but I also think when we're manifesting, because we talked about putting out to the world what we want, right? And I believe that happens. But a lot of it has to do with your gratitude, radical gratitude. So you wake up today after you've lost your child, you wake up and you're like, you have two thoughts. Shh, I'm still here. It's not a dream. It's not, you know, it's a nightmare. But I take a breath. <sighs> Thank you, God, for giving me breath to live. And that yeah. little, you know, that his love he has for each of us is his breath he gives to us. Mm. And to me, that's gratitude. And it can be that simple of just mm. thinking. God, the universe for being able to breathe today. Yeah, I think that's beautiful, you know, and I love the fact that you're obviously, you had an emotion, emotionally, you were in a really dark place, but you went on an amazing spiritual journey to, to discover your authentic self and, and to open the doors of opportunity and possibility and who you were as a person and say, here I am. Right. And that, and, and that then subsequently helped you heal through, through your emotional um, loss as well. Mm -hmm. So I, I think, you know, sometimes people think it's all about at focusing on, on your emotions and, but actually if we look at the, the different quadrants of our well-being, our emotional, our physical, our mental, and our spiritual, they're all interconnected. Mm -hmm. So if you folk, if you go on to a spiritual journey, that will then support your emotional journey as well. And may, yeah. That's just amazing and beautiful. So in in the in the context of your life now, what is next? Oh my goodness, such a good question. What is next? <laughs> You know what? I'm continuing with. Um, I've I've written a bunch, of, a couple other anthology books that I've done chapters in that I've really enjoyed doing with um, these amazing authors. My radio show, making more, meeting more guests, um, putting together retreats. This is my next step in October. I have a retreat coming in Park City, Utah, in the United States, and I'm so excited putting together curriculum and watching this unfold. And I just, I'm like, let go, let God, let go, let God, let go. <laughs> this is meant to be, is going to happen because to me, things happen easily. And when things aren't coming together and I'm forcing, I have to step back yeah. and go, okay, this retreat might not be what I'm planning, right? We can put it out there because I totally believe in manifesting. Mm -hmm. But is it going to be what's best for me? And that part is when the universe takes control and we'll decide. <laughs> so <laughs> I have to learn to relax and let go. I got my first cold sore since my divorce. I had oh, my no. cold sore for like eight plus years. And I would get them when I got stressed. And I got yeah. one this last week. I'm like, oh, I'm stressed. Oh, my goodness. Isn't it funny how your body tells you you're stressed before your mind tells you? <laughs> Yeah, I'm like going, Karen, it's going to be okay. Yeah. It's going to be okay. Yeah. And and at the end of the day, it is. And moving forward, I mean, hello, Dr. Ruth, you know me. I'm this fairy turtle. I, I would love to find a partner who wants to share their energy and love with me. Hello, I would love that in my life, you know. Um, I just want to have health and success and abundance and sharing my message to everyone because success and abundance is not all about the money. To me, that is... To me, it's about sharing who you are, all of you, right? And what's really inside. Yeah. And spreading that love, that abundance, that light. And to me, that's so important to do. And I think, you know, your journey is just shows how much that can get locked away. Yeah. Uh, and I really encourage uh, everyone listening <laughs> to this to, to read Karen's book because it's amazing is how that, light of of you that authentic you can get shut down um through certain aspects of of your journey in life and to to really take the time to find that light inside you and to ignite it again and 
and really open up up the doors for for yourself to be to be you yeah <laughs> which i know i've i had it shut down too and i know how important it is how free you feel mm -hmm. when you can just be your authentic self again so so how can people get hold of you what is a good way to get hold of you oh they can go to my um website shine now or never .com. you can reach out to me that way or my email is karen at shine now or never .com. so shine now or never um, <laughs> instagram facebook if you just type in karen right shine now or never i'm going to pop up and you'll be like ah, she's all over the place <laughs> but, um, but and your retreat when's your retreat october 7th through the 10th uh -huh. So that's coming up and all that information is on my website page on the Great. landing page there. And my book you can get on Amazon. Um, we are in the process. And so I'm really excited. Is we are in the process of turning it into Audible. So I'm going to be hopefully by Christmas time, it'll be ready to go. So I'm really excited about that. Oh, that's are you doing it yourself? Or are you getting somebody else to read? No, it? I'm hiring a professional <laughs> voice. Because I realized at first I'm like, yeah, I want to do it. But then I was listening to the experts and I uh -huh. thought, oh my goodness, it's so important to have a good reader yeah. read your book. And um, so I had to like step back and this is where leverage comes. You pivot and go, okay, so it's not going to be my voice. But what I am going to do is um, do my thank yous and my acknowledgments at the beginning of the book and then the professional will take over the professional oh. with that one so you'll get a little bleep bleep of me <laughs> oh that sounds brilliant great yeah. that sounds like super exciting yeah so, so a final question for yourself so this show is all about uh, brain health and unchaining your pain and based on the topic of discussion that we've had today and particularly in that from a grieving process as a as a mother what what would you, what one piece of advice would you give uh, anyone who's struggling with grief what would be your one piece of advice don't give up don't give up don't give up you're you're on on your journey you're on this path for a reason and you might not understand the answers you might never will but it doesn't matter that person whatever that loss was it can be loss of a job loss of you know your home things like that losses are coming in all forms and sizes and shapes you know besides the loss of a child or a parent which we've experienced um it's don't give up you're here for don't me. give up yeah yeah and i think that's so important that's such a beautiful message is that we're all put on this planet for a reason and we all have our own unique gift and it's important that we live it through yes and shine now right <laughs> don't wait till tomorrow do now because you don't know if you're gonna have tomorrow you don't know if you have the next minute no and i say to my daughter lily don't try and grow up too fast because she woke up one day and said mommy i'm an adult today and i said don't wish don't she's two and a half don't wish to be an adult because every day is the last day you're that age so make the most of every day that you get given yes I'm and it is a gift. you know they talk about living in the present the present is a present is a gift oh life. that's lovely yeah you know, life is a gift it's a present to us and so do the best you can and every day is going to fluctuate depending on how you're feeling and it's okay you know and just be kind-hearted respect other people respect their opinions don't try to prove them wrong just listen we've got two ears one mouth for a reason listen to what they're saying yeah and, and let it be you know there's so much argument so much have you done this you know so yeah. much of this going on in the world and i think oh people <laughs> that's not what this is about yeah yeah we're all, we're all here together living in, yeah. in this beautiful world yeah that's so such great advice karen it has been an absolute pleasure having you on the show thank you for joining me i just wish you every luck in the future with your retreat and and your and your next novel that i'm sure you're going to write so uh, thank you for thank you for coming
Thank you, Dr. Ruth. I really hope you enjoyed that conversation. Thank you so much for listening. Please be sure to like and share this episode and leave a review on my website or on Apple Podcasts. If you're looking for opportunities to optimize your brain health or unchain your pain from a past trauma, make sure you visit my website, www.ruthmaryallen.com and use the code PODCAST10 at checkout to get 10% off all programs. And always remember, you are not stuck with the brain you have. You have the power to make it better. You have the power to unchain your pain and optimize your brain power and performance so that you can win back energy and time doing what you love. episode of Brain Health Unchaining Your Pain with Dr. Ruth Allen is for educational and demonstration purposes only. The information shared in each episode should not be interpreted as medical advice. This episode should not be used to self-diagnose or self-treat any health, medical or physical condition. Do not use this episode to avoid going to your healthcare professional or to replace the advice they give you. Consult with a trusted healthcare professional before doing anything contained in this episode. If you have any questions or concerns, please contact www.ruthmaryallen.com forward slash connect.